Hello, wonderful people. Good to see you again. Well, I said many times I really don't see you, but I'm still, I mean, you don't know. I'm really happy. I'm really happy. There's some people who really, you know, out there and uh, they want to listen to me. They deal with my accent. Uh, they have absolutely no problem with that. And I really do appreciate, guys, uh, for all the questions I am getting. Kevin, good to see you. Hello, hello. I really do appreciate. Uh, I'm getting uh, lots of emails. I'm getting uh, some comments. But I don't know why uh, people actually uh, prefer to send me email versus just the comment. I would like to ask you, it is better uh, if you would just comment and everyone would read it actually and uh, then I'll uh, do the live stream. Uh, hello Delilah, Bernie, good to see you wonderful people. Hello, hello. I'm, I'm not sure uh, if uh, uh, if you on Facebook or YouTube or uh, Twitch check the quality please because uh, lately I had a problem uh, with my internet provider uh, like I mentioned previously in the last live stream we had a big problem actually live uh, li last live stream so I had to restart an hour later uh, the new stream uh, I am paying good money I mean I'm talking about good money for one gigabit of internet speed wise but I'm not getting it and I tried to fix that problem and I hope today is going to be okay please let me know if uh, there's any problem uh, John uh, Conway, good to see you. Nate, hello, hello. John, uh, another John also. Hi, let me actually uh, just to pull you guys for you. Just know that I'm mentioning you, okay? Okay, so Bernie, Delilah, Kevin, and uh, all other people. Ernie, good to see you, wonderful people, okay? So now, uh, let me start. I don't want to take uh, too much time of yours. Uh, let me explain what I've done uh, since last time, which was actually pretty much end of uh, the week. Uh, I still uh, worked a little bit on this piece. Now it's completely done. It's uh, completely finished. Uh, obviously, there is no such a thing as 100% uh, done. And you know, people uh, who carve, you can always find something to work on. You always find something you can refine. But I have a client that's not for me, okay? So if it would be just for myself, I could spend as long as I wish and just make it to the perfection. Now, in this case, this project is going to be a paint grade. So it's going to be white, just in case if you wonder. It's going to be just uh, brushed on the really old chalk paint. And that's going to be just the white color. Uh, lots of uh, tool marks will be covered because it's going to be a really thick layer uh, of paint. Uh, we're trying to replicate uh, 15th, end of 15th, uh, beginning of 16th century Venetian style carving. Let me see. Keith! Uh, good to see you. Actually, Keith, so the question is uh, from you that is I going to answer today. Steven, good to see you. And uh, all other, other people, if I, you know, miss you, don't take it personally. I still love you. I still like you. So please comment, uh, like it, subscribe it. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about today again about the tools. I tried to explain a little bit what I was uh, working on. Now I've got the second piece uh, I'm working on. Uh, actually, I didn't even start carving the process, but uh, I took care of uh, you know some of the uh, band sewing and so on. And I've got one of the gouges. One of the gouges uh, I got ready. David, good to see you. Uh, let me see if... Uh, everywhere people connect it. Uh, what about uh, Facebook? Any people on Facebook? Is quality problems there or no? Let me know. People on uh, Facebook. Uh, you know, old people, they love Facebook. So I'm pretty sure you're there, okay? 
All I see right now is just uh, uh, YouTube. Tom, good to see you. Oh. James, wonderful. Okay, now I've got at least one person on the Facebook. I know there's uh, more, but at least uh, one set, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, good day to you, James. Okay, now uh, let's get to the subject. Like I said, I am getting a lot of uh, uh, questions and uh, I really do appreciate that. I have a lot more than I can answer, which is absolutely fine. Uh, of course, I am sifting because uh, some of the questions uh, I already answered multiple times and uh, a lots of questions. It's the same question. What kind of wood are you using for wood carving? It's the same question. Just for those of you who are planning uh, to ask me that, I'm most of the time using bass wood. And Keith, I mentioned previously, he hates bass wood. He likes maple. Okay. Uh, so he uh, he actually sent me email. Let me find it and I'll show that to you, okay? And that's going to be subject of today's live stream. Here you go. So that is the email. Thank you for your information on antique gouges during the live broadcast uh, you posted on YouTube. Sorry I missed your stream and you are forgiven. But the main question of this email was... You know, when you get the old antique tools, uh, a lot of times it's just, there's a problem, rust. It's rusty, especially you're getting uh, tools from people who didn't know how to take care of. It's just uh, like a pretty much like a junk, okay, in a garage somewhere. And uh, it, some people decided to sell it, which is actually a good idea to shop, to hunt for those old tools. I do have uh, today on my bench a really, really, really old gouge, okay? And you can see, you know, this gouge in a really bad shape. And what I'm planning to do today, I'm gonna do a live demonstration how to clean it. If you like that idea, let me know, please. If you really like that idea that I'm gonna do uh, right before the camera, you know, we're going to take care of that, you know, rust. Like I said, there's a, a problem on um, uh, inside sometimes. Let me get uh, rid of uh, my block uh, just for you. I mean, uh, those people who wonder what am I working on. So that is the second piece and that's how it looks in the beginning. Okay. Get rid of it. I also want to get rid of the sound <laughs> because uh, I'm hearing myself all right Kevin good idea love the la live streams I really do appreciate people who's um, liking it but let me show that uh, gouge to you okay let me show that to you so that is the old gouge really 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 old gouge uh, and uh, let me show you what's the condition on inside. And you can see it is completely, you know, good on outside. It's actually really good on outside, but rusty on inside. Uh, I chose a bigger tool. Well, it's not really big. Uh, we're talking about just the six millimeters. Uh, that is about six millimeters tool. Uh, so it's... Uh, uh, a quarter inch for those of you who don't know but Keith he asked me about the small tools uh, he loved to use for his acanthus carving on a, a maple for the undercutting and so on uh, the problem is still the same inside inside of the a gouge there's a rust uh, and how would you take care without uh, destroying it uh, without damaging the anatomy of the tool uh, and uh, I'm going to answer you uh, uh, two methods. Actually, there's more than uh, two, but uh, uh, my preferred two methods is what I'm going to concentrate on today. So, by the way, if you look at that tool, if you look at that tool, that tool is a really unique tool. Really, really unique tool. Of course, it's a gouge, you know, there. 
Uh, but look at the brand. Uh, are you able to read it? And let me spell it for those of you who can't read that. That would be... And the logo he used, it would be just like that, like a cross. Almost like uh, Knights Templars cross. So that would be the logo. Okay? So uh, this logo, uh, you know, you can probably detect right here. Of course, it's not clean, but see that cross right here? So that is the logo. So William Butcher, for those of you people who don't know that brand, uh, it is a really fine tool maker. And uh, really interesting. They did not produce any more tools since 1875, I believe. Maybe 85, something like that. So the last time they produced those tools, it was 19th century, end of 19th century. But the William, really important, when you look at that tool, okay, uh, if, if just by chance you're going to get, uh, uh, you know, tool like that on the market, look at that tool. And uh, if you see a mark like uh, right here, W, that means it's original William Butcher. Why is that important? Because uh, it used to be two brothers. It used to be two brothers, William and Samuel. Okay, and uh, uh, William started his manufacturing in 18th century. Uh, to be exact, he started 17, uh, I believe, nine, well, 1795. Okay, it's what I think. And they finished 1875 or 71, something like that. Uh, but the William himself, he started uh, his making of the, I mean, his uh, tool making in England. Of course, Sheffield, I mean, where else? It's the best place for the tools, uh, best manufacturers in the Sheffield. And uh, 18th century tools, it was just a W, you know, butcher with the cross. And on the back side, really interesting. Let me let me show that to you, okay? You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Take a look at that logo right here. You know what? Let me get the white chalk. Maybe I'll be able to just show that to you better. Let me get that white chalk on. Maybe wipe it. That doesn't work. Well, hold on. I, I really want to show that to you, okay? Don't walk away. Really, really, really want to show that to you. Just a slightly, just a sandpaper, which I hate to use the sandpaper on old tools, but in this case, I just want to make sure you see. And yes. I was able to reveal it. Take a look right here. See that arrow? Well, you know what? I need to get the better, much better marker for you were just able to catch it. Okay, see that arrow right here? And then another letter W. Okay, William and that arrow. Okay, why is that important? Because the most famous probably brand nowadays would be File. And guess what type of logo they're using? Exactly the same arrow, pointing uh, other direction, of course, but it's the same logo. So look right here. It's a pointing toward the handle, and this one points outward, which means, I mean, I just uh, speculate that those guys, Swiss made, I mean, tool makers, original ones, probably knew about uh, William Butcher and Samuel Butcher, brothers, okay? Like I said, the later on, it used to be just the two brothers, uh, William and Samuel. This one is, of course, just done by William before Samuel jumped on board and they worked together as a toolmakers. 
and uh, probably I don't know. I don't know. That is I'm making up stuff. Don't uh, don't count on that. But the logo is similar. It's exactly the same logo. And they traveled. They they would steal uh, ideas from each other. The, exactly the same way like we do right now. You know, in the business world, you know, people just are trying to get an idea from other people, which is okay, I guess. And uh, that is uh, how probably that arrow mark logo was adapted by Swiss Mater file. Maybe it's absolutely not the case. Oh, by the way, let me get rid of that uh, name. Otherwise, it just distracts you. I apologize for that writing on the screen. So, William Butcher. But look again, this tool. Uh, in my opinion, it's excellent condition. Original handle, which I really love, the original 18th century handle in England. So I really like the idea you can place your finger and you have that notch. Everything is original. Original ferrule, it's kind of loose. Of course, I mean, I could probably take care of it remove it but when i'm uh, looking at that when i'm really really uh, expecting everything i don't see a lot of problems but uh, remember what i said uh, previously uh, just because the force of the wood see that crack let, let me just clean that little bit for you will just see that see this crack right here so that is what happens because wood itself moves okay you know it expands it shrinks and when it exp you know expands not even the furl and in this case it's kind of solid i would say it's a kind of solid furl you know it's not uh, really really tiny really thin furl uh right here they use the really good solid furl but even a solid furl could not hold the force of the wood okay now, let's attack, you know, uh, all that rust. And like I said before, the idea is clean it without uh, destruction. Uh, uh, the original question, as I understand uh, what Keith asked, how back then people cleaned you know, all the tools without all the chemicals, uh, what we have today. Nowadays, we do have a lot of chemicals, okay? Uh, lots of chemicals. But uh, rust was the problem forever. I mean, you can read in the Bible about the rust problem. You know, we're talking about uh, 3,500 years ago, they still had to deal with the rust, okay? Because the iron is iron. If it's exposed uh, to water or oxygen, it rusts. I mean, they didn't have any uh, stainless steel. Well, maybe in my knowledge, uh, maybe they had, maybe they not. But uh, I'm not claiming that uh, I know everything. But I don't think they had any, uh, you know, stainless steel per se back then. Yeah, they had some advanced stuff, by the way. You know, uh, the oldest um, sword uh, in Europe. By the way, it used to belong to my family, my great, great, great ancestors. And that's the oldest sword found on the planet Earth. And that uh, they had some kind of uh, mixture of different metals inside. I'm, I mean, I don't want to tell about uh, too much of it, but they even had the traces of aluminum. How in the world aluminum, which was not even invented back then, got inside of that sword? But it was a lightweight. And yes, you know, they had that. So, but anyway, they had the problem. The, exactly the same problem what we have. Okay. And that problem is just a rust on inside. And how did they clean it? I guess probably some of you already know that. Uh, you probably know the answer. What they used, they used just a vinegar. Okay. That's what they used. In this case, it's uh, apple uh, cider vinegar, but it's a natural vinegar. They use different vinegars. I mean, you can produce uh, vinegars from uh, uh, different uh, stuff. Nowadays, uh, there's a chemically produced vinegar, uh, which is uh, you can buy in a store. By the way, uh, below the video, I'm going to place links uh, of everything what I'm going to mention today, just in case 
uh, if you're interested to buy uh, stuff what I'm using. Now, I'm not selling. By the way, yes, uh, don't forget to subscribe and like it and share it, okay? If you uh, take a link and share it on a, uh, Facebook or, uh, you know, other places, I would really do appreciate that. It's going to uh, help a uh, little bit to my channel also. So, but anyway, uh, like I said, all the links going to be below. Those links going to point you to the Amazon. Uh, yes, I, I am affiliate. Don't think I'm making a lot of money on that. I don't. Uh, they pay in really, really tiny portion of uh, a purchase, uh, which, uh, you know, not going to be sufficient even for, uh, you know, <laughs> one meal or something like that. That's just for convenience, okay? Just because it's easy to find. So those links going to be below, okay? So just to go to description and you can find all those links, all right? So vinegar. So that would be number one. I do have a, uh, like a plastic, whatever, cup. And uh, in that cup, I usually, right now, it's uh, almost empty because it evaporates. But that is a vinegar. And see how dark the liquid is. That is the iron itself because it dissolves not only rust, but it dissolves also the iron itself. If you're going to leave... Uh, now, your new gouge, new chisel inside for too long, uh, you're going to eat a lot of uh, material out. But this is the one of the methods. Uh, what you do, uh, you just uh, get uh, whatever the cup or whatever you can get actually uh, uh, like a plastic bottle, uh, like a water bo bottle, get that um, vinegar and it's going to last you for a long time. And then you just place that on inside of that for overnight. Okay. In the morning, all the rust most likely will be gone. All you have to do just to clean up and so on. So that is the one method. It doesn't matter what profile you're using. If uh, if it's uh, uh, like a quarter inch, like in my case, or if you're going to use uh, uh, even half a millimeter, okay? Even half a millimeter tool or, you know, whatever, uh, like uh, one millimeter, half a millimeter, like this, uh, it still accumulates some rust on the side. So vinegar will take care of that. But it's not my preferred way, by the way. So that is not the way I like to approach the problem. And I'll show you my way. But caution. I have to tell you that is not the cheapest way. But in my opinion, it is the best way. Okay? I mean, the, the results, and I'm basing it probably only on time okay how much time it takes to take care of the tool like i said we're going to take care of that problem right in the live stream versus the vinegar you have to dip inside of the vinegar liquid for overnight the method i prefer to use you don't have to do it it's going to take about 15 minutes 20 minutes maybe well it depends uh, how badly uh, your rusty tool is okay but what i like to use let me show that to you the product i love not cheap people not cheap it's like uh, 60 bucks for just that okay but what that is it's a rust dissolver and it is jelly okay so that is a jelly that's what i like and once you apply it all it takes all it takes just 15 minutes okay versus overnight it just uh, worth it first of all you don't have to deepen it what you do you just pretty much brush on you just brush on and wait 15 minutes and uh, you're gonna get the result let's do that okay if you like that idea please uh, thumbs up and uh, say something in the comments, okay? So you really like that idea or not. I really do appreciate if you're going to do that. Obviously, what you're going to need, uh, you're going to need uh, uh, a few things. Paper, <laughs> towels, or anything to protect the workbench. So where you're going to do that stuff, okay? So I'm just uh, using a paper towels. Uh, you can put uh, any type of protection. It doesn't really matter. So that is number one, what you're going to need brushes okay so you're gonna need uh, some kind of a painter's brush or something like that 
And yes, I linked uh, some cheap ones. You don't really need to get the uh, expensive ones. So those ones I gonna use, it is pretty much uh, cheap, cheap, cheap. Like uh, for five bucks, for five dollars on Amazon, you can get like a seven of them, like a set of seven. So those ones are uh, also gonna be linked below. Not those exact ones, but uh, the same idea. Doesn't matter what kind of uh, brush you're gonna use. But I'm using artist's brush because uh, sometimes what you have to do, uh, you really uh, have to get on the uh, inside. You know, let me actually find the <laughs> spot. So you really have to get on inside, you know, and uh, with the brush, you can get even inside of the really, really small, tiny groove, okay? Uh, what else you're gonna need? Just uh, stuff what you're using in the kitchen, okay? So right there, it's just uh, scotch bright. So that is what I use after applying that. No sandpaper, no nothing. It's, it's the stuff you washing your dishes with, okay? So and there's a different um, uh, duty. There's a light duty, I mean medium, and a heavy duty. This is one is a, a more like a, you know, heavy one but let me apply okay because i i can <laughs> talk and talk and talk but i really need to do <laughs> that stuff all right let me get it done let me get it done uh, oh by the way yeah that is important also that stuff is a uh, dangerous stuff okay so good idea to have some gloves <laughs> yes and they also uh place the link just in case if you're gonna just uh, buy everything at once so you can always just uh click on all of those links and it's gonna take you to the amazon and you can buy that but simple the cheapest cheapest gloves will do okay so those ones uh vinyl gloves i i believe it's uh the cheapest you can find the vinyl ones okay you really don't have to get the surgical ones all right, let's do that. But it's important, okay? It's important. Uh, not as much as uh, now when you apply that, but later on when you're going to clean. But uh, take a look. That is just a gel, all right? That is just a gel. All right. And yes, I'm going to cover it. Good advice, wonderful people. Don't save on it, okay? So there's no reason <laughs> to save on that stuff. But see the reaction? I'm not sure if you're going to be able to catch that or not, but see the reaction already? It starts right away. Right away. And yes, I'm going to just apply that all around. And let's see what's going to happen. I'm gonna remind for those of you who's trying to cheat on my videos and skip some of the stuff. So that is a butcher. It's a William Butcher. Really nice tool, okay? It's an antique. In this case, it's a most likely, most likely that is the 18th century, end of 18th century, maybe beginning of, uh, uh, 19th century before brother Samuel jumped on board and uh, that's it wonderful people I applied that I'm gonna leave it you know for just about 15 minutes while I'm answering some of the questions by the way ask me right now uh, some of the questions uh, if you have a question just ask now because uh, after you know, I do have like uh, 15 minutes or so to answer those questions before, you know, that uh, rust going to be gone. So, again, let me re repeat. That is about uh, $60. Really small, tiny, 8 ounces uh, bottle, but it's worth it every penny. I have that uh, for a long time and it's still, you know, you don't use a lot, okay? It's still like full. See that? I mean, I'm sure, if, can you catch that on the camera? And I use uh, that on the many tools. So it's just like one-time investment and it's gonna last you, I shouldn't say forever because I really don't know the due date on that. Does it even have it? 
no, it doesn't. So which means it's going to last long time. I mean, I hope it's going to last long time. So, but anyway, so my uh, gouge in a working progress, I mean, you can see it's already becoming lighter underneath and see all that rust. It's uh, going to be gone really soon. Let me see uh, what time is it right now. It's about 3.30. And I'm going to do a check, you know, all those questions. If you do have what I missed. Paul is saying, uh, went onto eBay and bought about seven old Eddie's gouges. This will come in handy. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. But by the way, Eddie's uh, uh, tools, uh, they less rusty most of the time. For some reason, it's just the metal did not uh, oxidate as much. I'm not sure why is that. But uh, Eddie's tools, uh, you know, I, when I'm buying Eddie's tools, they in better condition. Depends, of course. Uh, for example... Uh, Today, let me see, I'll, I'll show it to you. One of the old um, Edis tools. I've got this one. Let me get rid of this, push it away. But this one is the really old Edis. Uh, it's uh, JB Edis and Sons. And uh, this tool, it's a price metals also. And uh, I, I don't see any logo. Maybe there was a logo of Edison inside. But this tool, I mean, it's an older version of the Edis uh, tools. And it's a really, really good condition. I didn't really have to do a lot of uh, cleanup. So really wonderful condition. Beautiful. I mean, see that? You know, it's absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous metal. I love Edis. So I'm glad for you. I'm happy. Okay, let me see. James is saying, I love the live chat. Best thing uh, except for being <laughs> in your shop. Well, I, I, I don't let anybody in my shop. But that is a good point you just mentioned. I will be teaching, all right, in person. And uh, I just got a message on a Facebook from one of the people. He's saying one day he wants to shake hand with me. Uh, obviously, you still have a chance. I would love to shake hands with you. And uh, while I'm waiting, I, that's a good uh, thing to just mention to you that I'm going to teach in person. So first class is going to be just in about a week or so uh, in Austin in um, School of uh, Furniture. So I'm going to teach for the whole week right there. Uh, I'm going to teach multiple times in uh, Mark Adams. A school in Indianapolis, uh, in state of Indiana. There's multiple classes you have to check. Some of them already sold out. Uh, Austin, which I mentioned previously, it's gone. I mean, it's all sold out. Uh, I'm going to teach uh, in a main, uh, uh, which is a main cost uh, workshops, uh, William Brown's uh, school. Really wonderful place. Uh, uh, I know. Uh, it's filling up really quickly, so you really have to communicate with him right away. I mean, I, I probably a little biased toward the state of Maine because uh, I live in Florida, and uh, when I go uh, like in summertime uh, to state of Maine, it's just like uh, I don't know. It's just like a summer in Russia. Uh, it just reminds me everything right there is just like russia uh, all the nature all the trees everything uh, just like in russia love it i'm gonna be twice i'm gonna teach uh, uh, flower carvings like a green gibbon style and also classical carving and i also gonna be uh in a uh, school of uh, woodwork in tampa florida which is gonna be in fall also beautiful weather you know in the fall time so hope it uh, helps you okay so that is the kind of why I'll be waiting. Let me see if I missed some questions. So Keith, the guy who actually brought that question, uh, Maple Carver. One suggestion, always wipe my gouges with oil after using them. Hey, that is the next thing I want to show to you. You just jumped on board too quickly using foam for 40 years and still look like new. Always wipe off uh, the cutting edge. 
uh, or it will be uh, oxidized. Yes, absolutely. And all overnight. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, well, since you brought that up, I do use just a normal machine oil, okay? Uh, it's, it doesn't have to be penetrating oil. So that oil, what I use, uh, that is just uh, protection, as made for the protection. So that is what I use, traditional protective oil. I'm not sure if you're able to see that clearly. I don't think it's in the focus, but uh, that is what I use. This one is a French. You don't have to use a French, all right? So use uh, any type of uh, oil. It's, it's still going to work, but good advice. Delilah, two classes in Maine. Here you go. I, you know, really do appreciate that. Uh, it's only a few benches, people. It's going to fill up uh, really quickly, and it's only a few benches. Only the luckiest and blessed ones are going to be able to get uh, to those classes, okay? Same, uh, not too many benches in the uh, uh, state of Florida in Tampa. Jump on board right away, okay? I'm not selling it, by the way. I don't really need to even go right there. Back beans, what do you use to tighten up loose handles? Uh, uh, now, uh, I mentioned that previously, but I'm going to tell you just for you, okay? Just for you. Uh, obviously, if the handle is loose, you take apart, okay? You take apart. Either reuse the old handle, or you can just get the new handle of shape you like. I, I, I really love to make my own handles. I can show it to you just one example, okay? Like, like uh, this tool, okay? So that is, uh, uh, when I bought this tool, it, it didn't have any handles. Uh, I had some kind of Brazilian wood it's not ep it's a different one and uh, i just turned myself uh, whatever i love and uh, i placed that inside of course i use uh, my own ferrules which is by the way maybe one of the subjects in future for the live stream is going to be a really good subject for the future uh, uh just uh, uh how i do the whole uh, the, the whole tool restoration and so on but uh, once you, if you have a candle, what you have to do, uh, you can use uh, two things. First of all, you can just use a tie bond, glue, okay? Just tie bond. So you can, uh, I, I like to use a tie bond uh, too, uh, because it's, uh, you know, doesn't have to be outside. That holds really good, but it's not my preferred way, okay? What I like to use, I use uh, that stuff right here. Okay, it's epoxy. Uh, doesn't have to be expensive, but I like this one uh, because it's uh, clear, okay? It doesn't have any color. Two-part epoxy, you can buy that probably uh, anywhere. You can buy that online. You can buy that uh, in a local hardware store. Any type of epoxy, it's, as long as it's a resin epoxy, it's not as glass, okay? Because there's some, uh, there's some epoxies, uh, they're going to crack, okay? So if it's, uh, uh, you know, without uh, plastic resins inside, okay? Uh, some of the epoxy is too flexible, some of them too, uh, like a glass, so it's not good. This is a medium, I would say. It's a really good. It's holding forever, okay? So that's what I like to use. Now... But if you're planning to bang on the tool, if you like to use a mallet on your tool, I would just go with the tie bond because it's, a, a, you know, more flexible. So it just uh, moves. So it's going to be uh, much better. And it's going to stay. Of course, furl. Furl has to be really tight. And also you can glue that furl in place uh, also with epoxy or even tie bond. You know, uh, it's still going to hold. Okay. Trust me. Так, let me see. If I missed some questions. Thank you very much for this uh, comment. Did you forget to like it? Or, you know, subscribe it, hit that notification bell. That's the time, okay? That's the time. Let me see how long uh, 
uh, my tool was. It's about 10 minutes. That's what I had. Now, another comment, okay? I tend to turn handles from the local horn beam and then shape them like the old style Robert Sorby octagonal handles because their shape is so perfect. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, what you're talking about, uh, the old uh, Robert Sorby handle style is this style. So that is the old style of the handle, which is going to be, uh, you know, on my tools. All right, so that is what we're using. Exactly the same what Robert Sorby used uh, a spacer, like a leather spacer between furl and the handle itself. But what you're talking about, it has uh, uh, for the finger notch and it still has some octagonal stuff for those of you who like it. But this octagonal doesn't go all the way. Uh, it's still uh, uh, like a traditional end. And what I like about it, because when you place that in a hand, it just doesn't bug you. Those ribs don't get inside of your hand. So that would be really comfortable. And uh, again, for the finger notch, it's also really good. That's uh, what I like. That's what I choose, okay? Uh, doesn't matter how you hold it. You hold it like this or you hold it like that. It's still really, really, really comfortable. Really comfortable. So, uh, yeah, or even if you can just do stuff with your fingers like that, it's still really comfortable. So that is the uh handle you mentioned okay let me see another question that's uh google listens to me i don't know why google thinks you know that uh, i'm talking to you know, like those uh devices it's one of them behind, you know, <laughs> my uh, my TV, and I don't even use it. But sometimes it just uh, talks to me. Okay, okay. Let me see. Bug beans. What modern tool uh, today is closest to old edges and uh, butcher gouges? Uh, the modern tools, uh, the closest to edges. Uh, I don't think anyone, honestly. Edges are caring brothers. Those ones, the best ones. Henry Taylor probably would be one of them. But uh, Henry Taylor, let me show you the modern tools uh, by Henry Taylor. Uh, Henry Taylor, so that is the modern tool. Uh, they still use a wonderful steel. It's still wonderful. And it's really light. That's what I like. A really light. Uh, it's still Sheffield based steel. So that would be one of the tool makers. But the problem with the Henry Taylor, I shouldn't say there's a problem, but there is a problem. They don't make as many tools anymore for the wood carvers. They still do some tools for the wood turning, which is you don't need to have a lots of tools, but not as much for the wood carving. And the second would be, again, English made. Uh, that would be Ashley Isles. Okay. Ashley Isles would be the second closest to the quality of the steel. I love steel, what they use. It's a little heavier, and it's a heavy duty. Okay, take a look at uh, uh, the anatomy of the tool. So that is the Ashley Isles. And see the anatomy of the tool itself. It's just a really nice tool. Okay. So that is, uh, again, I don't know all of the manufacturers, but it's in my opinion... Uh, they close us, but they not, okay? None, I should say, none really doing any more the same, you know, what they've done back then, unfortunately. Now, uh, they feel lightweight and can't take a mallet. They can. You have to be just careful, okay? Uh, careful with the bevel and so on. Yeah, I mean, they made for the mallet. Uh, they do have, uh, uh, I mean, I use them. Uh, it's actually better steel, in my opinion, than uh, even uh, file. Uh, really heavy duty. Let me show you an example what happened. Uh, actually, you know what? It's not here. But anyway, I broke a heavy duty uh, gouge. 
it's okay, I'm not using it. But anyway, it's by file, uh, heavy duty, thicker, and I broke that with, by using the mallet, okay? Now, let me see if I'm ready to take that uh, off. Yes, it's exactly 15 minutes, and I'm ready. Are you ready, people? Hey, uh, comment. Yes, we're ready, just to get some expression done, okay? All right. All right, so that is that tool. So obviously, don't forget, you really, 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 really need to protect your hands. Okay, let me get my watch off and uh, I'll get my gloves on and I'll show you the result. Do you like that idea that we're doing that in life? That I'm not, you know, pre-recorded that stuff and did not fake the result because I know some people do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, what you're saying, uh, it's about the handles. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the handles is just ch cheaply looking ones. Uh, replace the handles. Okay, so that's the best advice. Okay. Uh, you're right. Absolutely right. I agree. I mean, handles is just uh, doesn't look anymore as it used to be. I mean, right there. It's the old style handle. That is a... Uh, uh, Herring Brothers, 19th century. Okay, that one is a uh, 1859 a uh, prize medal winner, Herring Brothers. But the handle original, so I like those handles. Are you ready? Good. Now, Scotch Bright, the stuff you cleaning your dishes. You don't need to use any sandpaper. Just a scotch bright. Okay, let me show that little closer what's going on. Take a look. See? All the rust is gone and did not destroy anything. Sometimes you have to apply twice. And looks like I do have a some kind of paint on the inside but see you know all the rust is right there and again if the rust penetrated a little deeper than what you expected you can apply twice absolutely no problem which i probably in this case will because i can see some rust really got inside most of it's gone, but there's still some. And yes, I mean, sometimes, like I said, you have to apply twice, uh, two times, three times. And uh, then you'll be able to see the result much better. But uh, again, it all depends on how old the tool is. And you can see probably, uh, let me try to locate that. You know, most of the rust is gone, but inside, you know, uh, it's just eaten away. And I'm gonna apply again, you know, the second time. Meantime, please ask me another question while I'm just applying that stuff and I'm gonna wait a little longer. And see it's uh, again, there's uh, some reaction going on pretty much right away. And people don't save on that stuff, okay? Don't be cheap on that stuff. I'm talking about when you're applying, just apply it, okay? So just really cover it with that stuff, okay? With the gel. All right. Let me wipe my hands. And you probably already got an idea 
Uh, so what's going to happen? So it's going to be gone completely. That tool is going to be just like brand new. Okay. Uh, the most, the most what I had to do like uh, three times. Okay. Three applications. But again, 15 minutes uh, each. I could actually leave it longer and just uh, leave it for half an hour or even an hour. That would be probably already uh, taking the most of the stuff out. In most cases, it's only probably 15 minutes and it's already done. But the worst cases would take two, three applications, which is 45 minutes together. It's not a big deal. Uh, Ernie is asking if it's based on a hydrochloric uh, acid, acid. I don't know. I'll, hold on just a second. Let me read it. Let me read it. If I can be able to even see it, I need to get my... <laughs> you know, glasses to see that. What's the stuff inside? No, it's a, it's a phosphor based phosphoric acid. Okay. It's a phosphor based one. The Lila is saying learning how to take care of your tools very important. And life is great. What about uh, corrosiveness? Oh, I'm sorry. Subscribe and like just in that moment and decided to just go on the screen. But anyway, okay, good. I know you are having tools made uh, for you, but do you ever make tools yourself for specific jobs? Uh, I used to, okay? Uh, yes, uh, Phil, uh, I used to, okay? All the tools uh, uh, I used uh, to make, uh, it was uh, most of them I was uh, when I was in, in Russia. Not only in Russia, I made my tools uh, when I was uh, in jail for my beliefs in Russia. And for those of you uh, who don't know about me, uh, yes, I'm uh, Russian-born. I came to United States like a quarter century ago. Uh, as a refugee, I was uh, in jail in Russia uh, for my beliefs and so on. And I still was carving. I was able to carve inside. But uh, there is no sharp tools available, of course, in, uh, in jail, which is uh, really uh, you had to make your own. And uh, yes, some of the tools, uh, like a knife, uh, just the simple knives, like, you know, the small ones, not like uh, those knives. Uh, it was just like maybe... A, uh, 10 millimeters, the most you could have, about the three-eighths of an inch. Knives, simple gouges uh, we used to make from just even nails, okay? Yeah, you have to uh, heat treat and just to do that, but even for the framer's nails, you can do some gouges. Uh, yes, I've done some tools, obviously, and uh, I know the whole process, how to do that, how to do the, the right treatment, how to do uh, forging and so on, blacksmithing. Uh, the tool, uh, how to get uh, everything. Maybe some someday I'm going to show that in my school, how you can do uh, some small gouges uh, right in your home uh, without breaking the budget. Uh, pretty much you can do that. It's not a big deal. Uh, as far as the now, for the specific jobs, I don't need to, okay? I don't need to make because I have uh, lots of tools and most of the jobs I can uh, handle with no problem. I, I don't think I even uh, uh, ever had any problem like that with the tools I have uh, for a long time. You know, I'm, uh, I've got the right gouges and uh, right uh, veiners and uh, everything. I'm able to actually handle pretty much uh, any type of job. Okay, let me see. Егор, спасибо большое. That's the wild story. Thank the Lord you managed to escape uh, that somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I escaped really pretty much uh, after the jail. I applied in, you know, United States Embassy and I've got the refugee status in two hours. Okay. Uh, if you want to 
know a little more a couple years ago i did the long live stream you can go to my on my site school of and uh, if you're part of my school uh, there's actually a, a long long story i posted uh, the life story it's just like uh out of you know biography if you wish to call that way you know when i was carving and i was just doing that about that but it's not something i'm you know uh, trying to brag about or even mention too much so it's just life what can you do okay let me see how long it uh, is it's about 10 minutes later after the second application and i'm going they're gonna probably just do that they're gonna try to clean it hope it's gonna come out There's still some reaction, I can see. I should wait like five minutes more, but uh, most of the rust is gone completely. But this case is a severe case, I should say. I don't want to take too much time of yours. But that's uh, what it is, and I'm going to apply again. I'm going to uh, do the third time. The third time. And uh, I probably should uh, leave it a little longer. My apology that you didn't see what I'm doing. I'm gonna expose that a little more. And maybe just rub that in. But you can see actually, you know, right here, take a look uh, up opposite side. Opposite side, let me see if I'm gonna catch that on the camera. The opposite side see how clean that is already get that wipe right here see that and i didn't even do too much to it okay and it's already clean that is the result and that's going to happen uh, everywhere and the, obviously now you can see the logo you can see that arrow with no problem it's uh, really really what i'm after so good stuff people really good stuff okay again be careful do not do that with bare hands really i mean that stuff is so strong you can you know it can destroy your skin so just to use those gloves and it's gonna be you know much safer for you i should say and just uh paint brushes i'm not gonna take too much time of yours like i said you saw the result on the back side I'm going to wait uh, another 15 minutes. Don't want to stay right here and just spend too much time because I really have to work, okay? I really have to do <laughs> that stuff for my client, okay? But let me see if there's uh, uh, some uh, uh, questions or suggestions. Buck bean, beans. I use, uh, I mean, you're using uh, that type of oil, but you can use uh, pretty much uh, any type of oil and it's going to protect that. <laughs> don't forget uh, safety goggles and glasses also yeah i mean a good idea i do have it right here but uh, it's a good idea but better idea don't touch yourself uh, after you're using that and don't save those gloves just take them out and uh, throw away i mean you don't want to lay those gloves around your children grandchildren right oh mike Hey, sorry, I missed this one. I had to work. Can't wait to watch it. Yeah, I mean, hey, jump on it and watch it. Let me see how long uh, it's already going on. It's about an hour, people. I don't want to take too much time of yours. Thank you very much for joining today. Again, I'm going to show you one more time the result what I'm getting. Okay, so that is the result. So that's pretty much the result. Of course, I mean, you can take it to the extreme and clean it even more. And it's going to be shiny as new. 
And see, I did not send anything. I didn't take that uh, logo away. It's just a great one. Take a look. It's just like brand new. Can you see it? Just like brand new. If you like it, like it. I mean, hit that thing. Or if you really like that, in comment, just say, I like it. Thank you very much, people. I'll see you soon. I'm going to end right now. Ask, ask, ask questions, please. It is better not to send me emails. Sometimes I'm losing them. I'm getting a lots of emails. And I don't want to be mean. Okay, I, although I'm not mean. But it's better to ask uh, in the comments below. I am checking every comment. And I'm reading it. Okay? And if I don't like the comment, I'll just delete that. Okay? But comment, please. Comment and ask me questions. What would you like me uh, to do in the next live streams? I really do appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Blessings to you. Just a gift, a gift of smile to someone today. And check my calendar, obviously, you know, uh, in person. And just uh, call those people, email those people, and, you know, get the chance to shake my hand. I would love to shake your hand, I should say. Have a good one.